Hey guys, Tyler here. Earlier this year, I made a video about the Asari species from Mass Effect. Ever since that video, I've wanted to explore various other aspects of the Mass Effect universe. So in honor of Mass Effect Day, I thought I'd cover one of the most impressive and enigmatic locations the games have to offer the Citadel. Initially attributed to the Protheans, who used it as their civilization's capital, the Citadel serves as a central hub in the galactic community, linked by the mass relay network. The Citadel is a space station that has many of the same characteristics we'd associate with such a landmark of space technology. It has artificial gravity, sturdy defenses, a large resident population, and a booming local economy centered on galactic trade. In this video, I'll take a close look at the Citadel, its construction, its purpose, etc., and compare it to our expectations about what we could build in real life. Without further ado, let's get started. As I mentioned, the Citadel was initially believed to have been constructed by the Protheans, an ancient race thought to be long extinct, to whom the mass relay network is also attributed. But the truth is, they actually didn't build the Citadel. They were simply the last race to use it before the Asari discovered it circa 580 BC. The Citadel and the mass relays, we learn, were actually constructed by the Reapers. The original purpose of the Citadel and the mass relays was actually to lure in intelligent species and harvest them in a repeating cycle of genocide by the Reapers. The climax of this cycle is documented in the Reaper invasion in Mass Effect 3. The Asari found the Citadel after learning to use the mass relays, and they were joined by the Salarians about 80 years later. Together, these two species founded the Citadel Council, an interstellar government based on the Citadel that governs an area of space called Citadel Space. Citadel Space covers portions of the galaxy inhabited by species who recognize the Council's authority, and it comprises less than 1% of all the stars in the Milky Way. This is because the species who discovered the Citadel are only able to do so because they happen to live near Mass Effect relays. They aren't better than other spacefaring species, just lucky, so to speak, to uh, happen upon this Reaper technology. The Turians eventually joined the Council, and the various other species who made first contact with the Council were all given embassies on the Citadel. One of the most intriguing mysteries of the Citadel lies with its caretakers, the Keepers. The Keepers are a bioengineered insectoid race whose sole purpose appears to be to maintain the Citadel's vital systems. They're believed to be as old as the Citadel itself. They're mute, and there's little known about them, despite how visible they are. What is known perhaps deserves a video of its own, but in the meantime, this brings me to my next discussion about the Citadel's architecture. The Citadel's layout includes a central ring that is 7.2 kilometers in diameter that has five protruding arms, each of which is 43.6 kilometers in length. So this thing is huge. It's over 180,000 times as long as the International Space Station. Running from one end to the other would be the rough equivalent of running a full marathon, not even a half marathon, a full marathon. Hence why the station is capable of supporting a population of roughly 13.2 million individuals, not including the keepers. It has a gross weight of about 7.11 billion metric tons, about 16 million times heavier than the ISS. The material that the Citadel is constructed from isn't even known to science, much like the material that characterizes the outer shells of the heptapods spaceships in the movie Arrival, so it really is one of the most unique objects in the galaxy. Located on the Citadel's arms are the so-called wards, which constitute the residential and commercial centers of the station. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. They're densely populated and home to numerous skyscrapers in a manner similar to Hong Kong or Singapore. The skyscrapers are sealed against a vacuum, as breathable atmosphere only extends up about 7 meters. And unlike the Presidium on the central ring that has parks and government offices, the 
wards have no day-night cycle. The day-night cycle on the Presidium, on the other hand, consists of a 14-hour day and 6-hour night. The Presidium's parkland is intended to mimic the lush landscape of an Earth-like world orbiting a G-class star, and the drinking water is purified to kill any harmful bacteria. The Citadel is also defended by Citadel Security Services, or CSEC, whose 200,000 officers patrol the station and handle everything from customs to hostage negotiations. But what about the actual physics behind the Citadel's architecture? It is a deep space station after all. Well, again, one of the keys to the Citadel's habitability is its rotating rings, which create artificial gravity through what is called centrifugal force. This inertial force is derived from the angular velocity acting on an object with mass in a rotating reference frame. In Newtonian mechanics, it is described by the equation F equals m times omicron squared times r. Centrifugal force is a key component of many envisioned space station and starship designs dating back decades. Not only has it been featured in movies like 2001 A Space Odyssey and shows like Babylon 5, but it's actually been a feature of several proposed real-world designs. Okay, we actually haven't built anything like this yet, but the science behind it is pretty solid. The Citadel's rotating rings create a comfortable 1.02 Gs on the ward modules and a light 0.3 Gs on the Presidium ring. This kind of artificial gravity is also a key component of the hypothetical O'Neill Cylinder, a long tube-like space station concept similar in appearance to the Citadel. Proposed by American physicist Gerard K. O'Neill in 1976, O'Neill Cylinders were to have been artificial habitats constructed using materials extracted from the moon and asteroids in one of humanity's early attempts at space colonization. They'd consist of two sets of rings that rotate in opposite directions to cancel out gyroscopic effects, and they'd be 20 miles or 32 kilometers long, connected at each end by rods via a bearing system. Okay, so much smaller than the Citadel, but similar principle. The point is, some of these Citadel's technologies are actually based in real science, and in particular, the method of generating artificial gravity is one of the most realistic things in the Mass Effect universe, or honestly, in any popular sci-fi. Things like faster-than-light travel also have a basis in theoretical physics, but um, yeah, that's perhaps a topic for another time, as are the inner workings of the Citadel Council and the species who inhabit it. In the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. I know that this is more of an overview kind of video, but hopefully it was interesting and hopefully I covered enough facets. As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and comment and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to do that as well so you won't miss future uploads and click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you think I deserve it and you want to support the channel even further, then becoming a patron or a member is a great way to do so. Links to those, as well as my social media and merch store, are in the description below. That's all I have for this week. I'll see you in the next video.